So believe it or not, but we are two months away from the 14 series. And so let's delve into all the new details regarding these phones. But first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just talk in. Right, so the first tip that we have is from 9to5Mac. They found references to an always-on display in iOS 16 developer beta 1, which of course, Kerman told us about before dub dub. And so yeah, this is our first piece of evidence towards an always-on display coming to the iPhone 14 Pro series. And to be honest, the lock screen redesign we've seen with iOS is clearly pointing towards an iPhone 14 Pro always-on display because there's widgets, a more bold font for the time and date, and so all of that can be elements of the always-on display we could see with the iPhone. So yeah, pretty hype for this, and this was a feature I used on a daily basis on my older Android phones, and so yes, I'm glad it's finally here on the iPhone. And so yes, when my iPhone charges on the wireless stand, being able to see quick information on the screen is gonna be pretty convenient. And for those wondering why it's coming to the 14 Pros only, that's because the new LTPO displays are gonna go down to one hertz, and that's what enables the always-on display on the Apple Watch, and so the iPhone is now going to follow suit. Anyways, moving on to a report from Trendforce, they tell us that yes, we should see more RAM with the regular iPhone 14 models. However, there is a catch because while the Pro models have 6 gigs of RAM, they are going to have LPDDR5 RAM, which is more efficient. Meanwhile, the 14 and the 14 Max are going to stick to LPDDR4X RAM instead. Now, to be honest, in data use, I doubt you're going to see much of a difference. And ultimately, what matters are the regular models getting 6 gigs of RAM. Because while I don't have RAM issues myself, I know that many do on their 4 gig iPhones. And so getting the RAM upgrade on the regular models is going to be appreciated. And yeah, this does kind of make up for the fact the regular 14 models are not getting a chip upgrade. Anyways, in terms of other details to note, the Pros could get 256 gigs of base storage. That's going to be a neat upgrade, especially when there could be a price hike. Also, do remember that you can't shoot 4K ProRes on the 128 gig versions of the 13 Pros, which is kind of dumb to be honest, and so this would fix that. However, do remember the regular models, they're going to stick to 128 gigs of base storage. As for the cameras, Trendforce reiterates everything said by the sources, so the same selfie camera upgrade on all models, and a 48 megapixel main sensor on the Pros. And finally, they do mention that the Pros are going to get stainless steel, not titanium, like some reports have suggested. I'm hoping that's false, because titanium is lighter, but also more stronger, so that on the Pros would be pretty neat. Anyways, finally, we do have some cases. These are fake versions of the clear cases Apple sells for the iPhones. But really, the main thing to note with this is the much larger camera bump on the back of the 14 Pro and the Pro Max. And you can see on the 14 Pro, the camera bump is super, super close to the MagSafe ring. So yeah, I do think that's the reason the 14 Pro is getting taller, because otherwise, there would not be enough space for the larger camera bump and also the MagSafe ring on the back. But anyways, this most likely means some existing MagSafe accessories might not work with the 14 Pro. And the final thing I want to mention before I forget is the fact the European Union has decided that by the autumn of 2024, all devices should have USB Type-C. So yeah, the iPhone should be adopting this standard, and we could see the 15 or 16 series getting the USB-C port. Now, I wirelessly charge my iPhone so I could care less, about this change, but of course, there are many who care about this, and with features like ProRes on the iPhone, I do think we need some sort of Thunderbolt port. And so yes, USB-C is going to be a pretty massive upgrade. Anyways, I do want to mention we have more leak cases and CADs for the iPhone 14 series, and they basically corroborate with all the leaks, so we have massive camera bumps on the Pros that stick out quite a lot from the actual frame of the device. But what's more interesting to me is that this Weibo source that gave us these case images says the bigger version of the regular 14 could be the 14 plus and not the 14 max 
And to be honest, I'm not sure why there's still confusion regarding this because Phil Schiller made it clear at the 10S event that any phone bigger than the old plus size is a max, and so this will fall under that. Also, do remember that Apple nowadays uses Plus for their services, and so mixing that with their hardware would not make sense. And yeah, since the Pro Max and the Max are going to be the same sizes, putting them under the same Max bracket makes the most sense. Since I could see some confusion if the 14 Plus was the same size as the 14 Pro Max. So yes, while Apple's naming schemes have been a mess, I'm pretty confident this is going to be the 14 Max and not the 14 Plus. Anyways, let's now delve into your thoughts regarding these new iPhones. So Davester45 is curious about the Apple in-house modems and whether we're going to see them with the 14 series. And no, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. In fact, recently Quote told us there's been development hurdles with these modems and so I don't think we're going to see this anytime soon. I do think these modems will take another few years to launch. And I'm glad Apple's not rushing into this because the modem is a very important part of the iPhone experience and the older Intel modems were terrible. So of course, I do not want to repeat to that situation with these in-house modems. Please Apple, get them perfect right from the get-go. Dave still also says that the satellite features are going to be a game changer. And yes, I agree with this because calling anyone anywhere on the planet without cell service is really going to save lives and I believe this tech can work with the existing Qualcomm modem so of course I do hope we see this with the 14 series. So yeah there's that guys but tell me your thoughts on these reports in the comments. Anyways thank you for watching guys make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the above on details regarding the iPad Pros with the M2 chip and on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya, peeps.